Hotspot with Loveth. Adamola's life was a complex web of deceit and manipulation, woven from the threads of his troubled past. Born into a poor family in the rural town of Ibadan, Nigeria, Adamola grew up with a deep sense of insecurity and inadequacy. His parents, though well-meaning, struggled to make ends meet, and Adamola often went to bed with an empty stomach. Despite the hardships, Adamola's parents instilled in him a strong sense of spirituality. They were devout Christians, and Adamola grew up attending church services and participating in prayer sessions. However, as he entered his teenage years, Adamola began to feel disillusioned with the church. He saw the hypocrisy of some church leaders who preached about the importance of honesty and integrity, but lived lavish lifestyles funded by the tithes and offerings of their poor congregations. Adamola's disillusionment with the church was further exacerbated by his own personal struggles. He was a bright student, but his family's poverty meant that he couldn't afford to attend university. He felt trapped and helpless, watching as his peers went on to pursue their dreams while he was stuck in a dead-end job. It was during this period of frustration and disillusionment that Adamola met a mysterious figure named Baba Tunde. Baba Tunde was a self-proclaimed spiritualist who claimed to possess the power to communicate with the spirits of the dead. Adamola was initially skeptical, but Baba Tunde's charisma and confidence eventually won him over. Baba Tunde, impressed by Adamola's eagerness, took him under his wing and revealed a shocking truth. Many influential religious leaders were secretly members of occult groups, using dark powers to perform miracles. Adamola was stunned and begged Baba Tunde to teach him the occult practices. Baba Tunde agreed, and Adamola quickly proved to be a skilled student. Soon, he was participating in rituals and incantations alongside Baba Tunde and was formally initiated into the occult. The two formed a close partnership with Baba Tunde as the mentor and Adamola as his protege. As Adamola delved deeper into the world of the occult, he realized that the church was just a facade, a way for people to feel good about themselves while ignoring the real issues facing their communities. Adamola became convinced that the only way to truly gain power and influence was to tap into the dark forces that lurked beneath the surface of society. He decided that he would also start a church in order to amass wealth and power. He started a church, which he called the Church of the Divine Spirit. The church was a font for his occult activities, and Adamola used it to recruit new members and clients. Adamola's church quickly gained popularity, attracting a large following of people who were seeking spiritual guidance and enlightenment. Adamola preyed on their vulnerabilities, using his charisma and charm to manipulate them into doing his bidding. He paraded himself as Reverend Adamola. As the years passed, Adamola's church became a powerful institution in the community. Adamola used his influence to amass wealth and power, performing great miracles that spread round the city, and he became a respected figure in society. His followers never knew that behind closed doors, Reverend Adamola was still practicing his dark arts, using his church as a cover for his occult activities. On a serene Sunday morning, a newcomer graced the premises of the Church of the Divine Spirit, drawn by the whispers of miraculous occurrences that had been circulating with fervent enthusiasm. Nioma, a bright and inquisitive young journalist, had been compelled to visit this esteemed place of worship, her curiosity piqued by the numerous testimonials of devotees who had allegedly experienced profound transformations and blessings under the spiritual guidance of Reverend Adamola. As she stepped into the church, Nioma was not merely a casual observer. She was a seeker, driven by a deep sense of longing and vulnerability. Her personal life had been marred by a series of unfortunate entanglements with men who had callously broken her heart, leaving her feeling fragile and uncertain. Now, at the threshold of her 35th year, Nioma felt an overwhelming urge to settle down and build a life with a loving partner. Yet, despite her fervent desires, this aspiration seemed to be tantalizingly out of reach. It was amidst this backdrop of emotional turmoil that Nioma sought solace in the sacred precincts of the Church of the Divine Spirit. She had heard whispers of Reverend Adamola's extraordinary gift of healing and his unwavering commitment to guiding his flock along the path of righteousness. 
with a heart filled with hope and a mind open to the possibilities of spiritual renewal, Neoma joined the congregation, eager to experience the transformative power of faith that Reverend Adamola's church promised. As the last rays of sunlight faded, casting a warm orange glow over the now deserted church, Neoma remained, nestled in a secluded corner, her heart pouring out to the Almighty in fervent prayer and anguished tears. The evening air was heavy with the scent of incense and the soft murmur of her whispered supplications. Unknown to Reverend Adamola, Naoma's lingering presence had transformed the sacred sanctuary into a scene of surreptitious discovery. Oblivious to the hidden observer, the Reverend made his way to the altar, his footsteps echoing through the empty halls as he prepared to perform his customary ritual sacrifice in the concealed chamber beneath the altar. Neoma's curiosity was piqued by the faint sounds emanating from the altar. She cautiously emerged from her hiding place, her eyes scanning the dimly lit space until they came to rest upon the Reverend. Her gaze was met with a sight that made her blood run cold. Reverend Adamola, clad in a crimson and ebony attire that seemed to shimmer with an otherworldly essence, stood before the altar, his hands grasping a calabash as he intoned ancient incantations. The air was heavy with an eerie, pungent scent that seemed to sear itself into Neoma's nostrils. Her heart racing with terror, she fought to stifle a gasp, fearful of alerting the Reverend to her presence. With trembling hands, Neoma carefully retrieved her phone from her purse, her fingers moving with deliberate slowness as she zoomed in on the reverend's sinister ritual. The soft click of the camera's shutter was the only sound that betrayed her presence, and even that was masked by the reverend's chanting. As the reverend began to disrobe, shedding his occultic attire for the more familiar vestments of his clerical office, Neoma seized the opportunity to make her escape. With the stealth of a phantom, she glided towards the rear door, her phone clutched tightly in her hand, the damning evidence safely stored within its digital confines. As she emerged into the cool evening air, Neoma's feet seemed to move of their own accord, carrying her away from the scene of her shocking discovery with a speed born of fear and urgency. As the faint whisper of the door wafted through the evening air, Reverend Adamola's instincts were instantly aroused. He swiftly completed his transformation, shedding the vestiges of his occultic attire for the more familiar, dignified garb of his clerical office. With a sense of urgency, he hastened to investigate the source of the sound, his footsteps echoing through the deserted corridors as he made his way to the door. However, Upon arrival, he was met with an unsettling stillness, the only sound being the soft creaking of the door as it swayed gently in the evening breeze. The reverend's gaze scanned the surrounding area, but there was no one in sight, leaving him with a lingering sense of unease. Meanwhile, in the cozy confines of her modest apartment, Neoma paced back and forth, her mind still reeling from the shocking revelation she had witnessed. The stark contradiction between the reverend's sacred office and his profane, occultic practices had left her feeling stunned and bewildered. As she wandered aimlessly, her journalist's instincts began to stir, and she felt an overwhelming urge to delve deeper into the mystery, to uncover the truth behind Reverend Adamola's duplicitous existence. With a newfound sense of purpose, Neoma steeled herself for the challenge ahead, her determination to expose the Reverend's dark secret burning, brighter with each passing moment. Neoma became a diligent attendee of Sunday services, and over time she noticed a peculiar pattern in Reverend Adamola's behavior. Every Sunday, without fail, the Reverend would excuse himself from the congregation for approximately 30 minutes. This consistent absence piqued Neoma's curiosity, and she couldn't help but wonder what the Reverend was doing during this time. One Sunday, as the Reverend stood up to leave, Neoma discreetly followed suit. Unbeknownst to the Reverend, she trailed him from a distance, careful not to arouse suspicion. The Reverend led her to his opulent office, where he disappeared from view. 
Nioma positioned herself strategically by the window, her ears perked up to catch any sounds emanating from within. What she heard left her aghast. The muffled sound suggested that Reverend Adamola was engaging in intimate relations, even as the church service continued uninterrupted. As the Reverend became engrossed in his sermon, Nioma seized the opportunity to execute her plan. On Sunday, with calculated stealth, she slipped out of the church, making her way to the Reverend's office. She carefully surveyed the area, ensuring that she was not being observed. Satisfied that the coast was clear, she approached the window, which was slightly ajar. Without hesitation, Neoma swiftly attached a miniature spy camera to the Louvre frame, positioning it to capture a panoramic view of the room. The camera, equipped with advanced surveillance capabilities, was designed to record even the most subtle details. As fate would have it, the spy camera captured irrefutable evidence of Reverend Adamola's depraved activities. The footage revealed the Reverend engaging in illicit trysts with various women while church services were in progress. These clandestine encounters were followed by a bizarre ritual in which the Reverend would place a calabash over the women's heads, recite an incantation, and then use a red handkerchief to wipe their genital areas before depositing the handkerchief into the calabash. Simultaneously, the spy camera, expertly concealed from prying eyes, captured a treasure trove of incriminating evidence. Every conversation between Reverend Adamola and his accomplice, Baba Tundi, was meticulously recorded, laying bare the sinister details of their dark rituals and the nefarious use of church funds to finance these abhorrent practices the next Sunday Nioma. Returned to the Reverend's office, her actions guided by a keen sense of timing. While Reverend Adamola was distracted by his sermon, Nioma seized the opportunity to retrieve the camera, deftly detaching it from its hiding place. The camera, diminutive in size and cleverly concealed, had remained undetected throughout its deployment, a testament to Nioma's cunning and resourcefulness. With the camera safely in hand, Nioma eschewed returning to the church, instead opting to make her way directly home. Her heart racing with anticipation, she eagerly looked forward to reviewing the footage, knowing that it held the key to exposing Reverend Adamola's dark secrets and bringing him to justice. After she watched the content of the camera on Hap Laptop, she came to the shocking realization that Reverend Adamola was using the church as a front for his occult activities. He was manipulating his congregation to do his bidding. Neoma knew she had to expose Reverend Adamola's secret to the world, burring the faces of his female victims. She uploaded the video to social media with the caption, you'll never go to church again after watching this video. The video went viral, and soon the whole town was talking about Reverend Adamola's dark secret. The church was shut down, and Reverend Adamola was arrested and was charged with occult practices. As the news of Adamola's arrest spread, the community was left reeling in shock. Many people couldn't believe that the man they had trusted and revered for so long was actually a fake. They felt betrayed and deceived, and many of them began to question their own faith and spirituality. Adamola's downfall was a wake-up call for the community, a reminder that even the most respected and revered individuals can hide dark secrets.